Zimbabwe accounts for a third of the world's diamonds, a statistic that has drawn the world's attention, but which is yet to bring the sought-after riches for this Southern African country. Because diamonds make a lot of money, there is an expectation of huge amounts coming in upfront. It doesn't work like that. The revenues have been slow in reaching national coffers owing to sanctions that have seen producers sell their gemstones at a fraction of their cost. Following the lifting of sanctions, a window of opportunity is now open for Zimbabwe to exploit. Estimates show that the extractive component, which is what Zimbabwe is currently engaged in, generates $8 billion in revenue globally. Cutting and polishing realizes up to $24 billion, and jewelry production rakes in $72 billion. Zimbabwe wants a piece of that cake. It has made value addition a priority. That has enthused players in the sector, amongst them the principal of the country's only diamond cutting and polishing school. The center has churned out over 200 graduates ready to feed the industry. To be very honest with you, I'm, I'm so happy with the trend that things are moving now. There is green light. Recent reports that diamonds could be running out have been refuted. The new mine's boss says the alluvial diamonds found close to the surface have been depleted, but kimberlites embedded deep in the earth are still abundant. Underground, our expectation is that we will get a higher contribution of gems and a lower contribution of industrials, and therefore the prices will be much higher, and therefore the benefits to the fiscals will be much higher. The minister has vowed to clean up operations and bring clarity to the opaque dealings that have dogged the sector, subsequently restricting the value Zimbabwe realizes from its diamonds. Good news for ordinary Zimbabweans who for a long time have heard of talk of the significance of the country's diamonds but are yet to feel the economic impact. Farai Mwakutuya, CCTV, Harare, Zimbabwe.